everybody. This is Keith from CryptoCoin Mindset. Hope this video finds you well today. And in today's video, we're going to be talking about something that's a little bit different. It's not specifically about cryptocurrency, but it does affect what you do online and potentially your cryptocurrency. There's been a lot of things in the news recently about online privacy and how people are starting to really realize how much privacy they give up when they are online and interact with different apps on their phones and so on. As a matter of fact, on our blog, we highlighted a recent survey conducted by DuckDuckGo, which is a privacy search engine, which basically said that of all the respondents in the survey, 80% said that they have made some adjustments in their privacy settings or had started using social media less in an attempt to protect their personal data online. But that's not the only thing, because it seems like every other day you're seeing some kind of article about a data breach from some major company. Facebook. Social Security. It doesn't matter. If you're putting your information online with anybody, you're kind of expecting that it's safe. But if recent history has shown us anything, it's the opposite. It's absolutely not safe. Let's face it, more and more of our lives today are online. Whether it's a purchase we make, a social media platform we visit, a cryptocurrency exchange we use, or heck, just an app we load on our cell phone to help us do something we need to do. Privacy is a strange issue in today's world. It truly is. So what can be done to help protect your privacy online? We're going to create a series of videos to go over some things. We're not going to get overly extensive, but we're going to give you some guidelines, recommend some services you can utilize, that kind of thing, in order to help increase security around your, your online data. So this video is the first in that series. I guess we should start out with a little definition. So what is privacy? I mean, in the physical world, we all know what privacy is, right? You go visit your doctor, you make sure you close the door so you can talk to your doctor privately. You go into your home, you close the door because you don't want the world outside to know what's going on inside. I guess in that sense, it kind of just seems like common sense to do those things. But when it comes to the digital space, things can often be a bit of a gray area. I mean, let's face it. A minute ago, I just mentioned about some recent data hacks and major players online. Well, again, we go online, interact with these major companies or governments for that matter, and expect that they are going to completely, wholeheartedly, 100% protect our online data. And that just isn't true. Now, there are many different facets to privacy. Those facets include what you do and who you are. The who you are information is generally referred to as personal identifiable information, or PI, P-I-I. It is pretty much what it sounds like. Your name, date of birth, address, social security number, that kind of thing. Now, the what you do aspect of your privacy is more along the lines of the searches you perform online, the websites you visit, maybe the articles you read, the social media sites that you visit. What are you buying online? Let's take it one step further. Today, you don't even leave home without having your cell phone in your pocket. That cell phone is connected via operating system to a major giant. Apple, if you use that brand. Google, if you use Android. Think about what you do with your phone. You use it just like you use your laptop or your desktop computer. You download apps. You visit websites. You name it. Maybe you're booking a vacation. You're looking up a medical condition. Who knows? But you're doing it with your phone. And all of these apps, for example, on your phone, you get the pop-up all the time. Give this app permission to view your files and this and that. Why? You don't even know who these developers are half the time, but yet you're giving them access to the basic inner workings of your phone and all your private pictures and everything else. 
this information, this data, all this private information about you, who you are and what you do, is a gold mine. Now, the media in general would have you believe that it's a gold mine for hackers on the dark web. And honestly, I'm not going to say that that's untrue. But frankly, that's not where the biggest data breaches come from. The biggest data breaches come from these companies that we know and trust that are basically data brokers. What does that mean? That means that they collect our data and they maintain it. They analyze it. They package it up and then they sell it without us knowing about it and frankly, without us giving permission for them to do it. Why are they selling it and who are they selling it to? Well, could be anybody they're selling it to, but likely it's for stuff like targeted advertising. So companies who want to sell stuff to us know exactly who and when to target things. Perhaps it's a potential employer that's trying to do a, a credit assessment. And those are the more palatable reasons that they would be selling your data. Now, some people take the attitude that, hey, I've got nothing to hide. And maybe you don't. But whether you have anything to hide or not, when you download an app on your phone, should they have access to everything in your phone and all the data that's on there? No, they shouldn't. Not to mention how much governments surveil their citizens. But that's a whole nother topic beyond the scope of this video right now. So, I don't want to make this first video too long. But I'm hoping that some of the things I just pointed out start to get the wheels in your head turning. That you need to take control of your online privacy. And if you are involved in the cryptocurrency space, you already know. You are responsible for what you do in the cryptocurrency space. You are responsible to make sure that you secure your private keys. You don't own your private keys, you don't own your coins. It's a simple rule. If you control the keys, it's your Bitcoin. If you don't control the keys, it's not your Bitcoin. Your keys, your Bitcoin. Not your keys, not your Bitcoin. Your keys, your Bitcoin. Not your keys, not your Bitcoin. You've heard that many times. This is the same. You need to take steps to start protecting your online privacy and your online data. And there are a lot of projects within the cryptocurrency space that can help you with that and outside too. And we're going to recommend some of those for you and try and point you in the direction to give you options to upgrade your security even just a little bit. So let's bring this all together in this first video. What are some things you can do today to help step up your online privacy? Well, I'm going to give you two things. One, you can start using a VPN. That's a virtual private network. Basically, it's giving you a secure way to transmit from your computer to who, whatever other website it is that you're interacting with online. We use, and will suggest to you to use, TorGuard VPN. There are a lot of different VPNs out there. Some of them are really inexpensive. Heck, there are even some I believe that are free. But you get what you pay for at the end of the day. And those free ones give up all your data anyway. Some of these other ones store your data. That's what you're trying to avoid. TorGuard doesn't do that. And if you use our link in the description below and use code CCM for Crypto Coin Mindset, when you check out, you'll save 50% off your package for life. You can't beat that. So TorGuard VPN, the link is in the description below, code CCM at checkout. That's step number one. Step number two, there's a link down in the description below for Brave Browser. Brave is a privacy by default browser built on Chromium. So it has the look and feel of Google Chrome, but none of the trackers. As a matter of fact, it blocks all of those trackers out of the box by default as soon as you download the browser. So link for that in the description below. Start there and watch for our next video in the series on your online privacy and security. And before you go, I'd like to ask you to hit that like button if you found this video helpful and also to share it with someone who might also get some benefit from it. And if you haven't already done so, please hit that subscribe button and tick the bell icon 
so you get notified every time we put out a great video. Thanks again for stopping by and visiting us here today to discuss this very important topic. Watch for our next video in the series, and we'll see you again soon. Take care.